Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Burn the Witch, the social deduction game. This is a 5 to 15 player game that takes roughly about an hour to two hours to play. It's for ages 14 and up, and it is a social deduction game, which is basically a game in which you're going to try and deduce who among you is the witch. You're going to be playing as either the heretics or the sympathists or sympathizers, and if your house has a witch, you are going to be working with the witches. If your house doesn't, you're working with the heretics. They're the ones that are going to be sussing out the witches. Now, there's a number of witches in the game based on the number of players playing, and I just have a five-player game set out in front of me because any more would make this huge. This game actually can get really, really massive. Based on the number of players is based on how many witches you're going to get, how many vote tokens you're going to get, and what each and every single one of your characters is going to have its own like unique role, whether it be a heretic or a sympathizer, or I guess a heretic, or uh, no, it's innocent or a witch. If you are the heretic, you have no witches on the team, and you're able to suss out all the witches, you win. And if you're the witches, your objective is to make the town sacrifice itself to the point where it feels like it's uninterested in doing anymore and lustily escaping. Will you escape as the witch, or will you burn all of them as the heretics? Find out in the game, Burn the Witch. To set up the game Burn the Witch, the first thing you'll do is determine the number of players playing the game. Based on the numbers play of players playing the game, you'll then determine how many witches and how many innocents are going to be in the deck. Not only that, but there's also a number of devouts. These are characters that will give you kind of a unique bonus whenever they are sacrificed or burned at the stake. Uh, in a five player game, each player is going to get four different female characters, and that is going to make up the house that they live in. Each of the characters are also going to get a unique role that's face down underneath their character cards. And for each witch you have, you're going to get a voting token, meaning if you only have three witches, three voting tokens, and so on and so forth. The rest of the witches and roll cards and votes you will not need. There's also a timer for when certain events happen throughout the game. Once each player has their number of characters as well as rolls and voting tokens, the game is basically ready to begin. Yep, that's simple. Once the game has been set up, each player is going to look at the characters that they have in their house. Each character has a number of symbols on them representing that character, whether it be maybe they're a blonde, maybe they have the color red associated, they have a dress, or maybe it's a cat or a crow, etc, etc. Then, they're also going to take a peek at the face-down cards. Maybe that character is going to be an innocent, or a devout, or if it's red, will be a witch. If you have at least one witch in your house, you are part of the witch team. Now, you're going to be the sympathizers. If you have no witches in your house, you are going to be then one of the heretics, the guys that are going around burning the witches. If you have more than one witch in your house, and you're playing a certain number of players, so let's say, for instance, you're playing a five-player game and you have both witches, because there's only two. During the close eyes phase, at the very beginning of the game, everybody's going to close their eyes, look at their character cards, determine or you know, determine who is the witch and who is the non-witch team, um, and you're going to look at each other, like, okay, I've got a witch, you've got a witch, great, everybody else's eyes are still closed. But if you have only the witches that are available, if I had both of them as witches, I could tap either player to my left or my right, and now they are also part of the sympathizer team. I can only choose one. So you're always going to get at least two players on the sympathizer team in each of the games, unless you're playing with a larger player game. Then you might get even up to three. After you've determined what team you're on based on the eye closing phase, you know what your characters are, they all have their vote tokens, and they all have their associated like different types of uh, symbols that go with the characters, and you remove everything else, the gameplay is ready to begin. How it works is quite simple. What you're going to do is one player will start off as kind of the accuser, Jacques, and you are going to basically uh, determine what symbol you want to vote out. So let's say that you don't have any black cats and you know that you're not a witch. Well, you can say, I'm going to vote out the characters that have black cats. They're very likely to be witches in my opinion, for one reason or another, whether it be, whether it be because of the people that occupy or own the occupied residence, or maybe you just suss that specific character out for one reason or another. And when you do that, each character will kind of present the characters with that symbol. Then each player in clockwise order, starting with you, is going to take your vote tokens and place them in the bin, whether it be the save bin or the burn bin. If at the end, after everybody has voted to the, up to the person on your, your right, uh, you're going to open this up. And if there's more burns than saves, then the character, the executioner, the player on your right, the right of the person who is being the accuser, is going to determine which of the characters to get rid of. They will assign one of those characters to the burn pile. If your character or any character gets burned, you're going to reveal their identity, 
and you're going to discard the character card along with the vote. So you'll get less voting power if you lose one of the characters in your house. If you've burned a witch, congratulations heretics, you've done your job. However, the witches would not like that all that much. If an innocent gets burned, then the witches will like that, and that's one down and a number to go based on the number of players playing the game. And if you manage to burn a, um, a devoted character, these are like basically innocent characters, but they're very devoted to the cause, they're actually going to be able to, uh, to, to, to have an instant vote. You'll flip this timer over and one player will be forced to lose one of their characters when that happens. Um, but otherwise, that's pretty much it. The next player, uh, the player that's now, that was once the executioner, will now be the person who decides which character is going to be voted on. Everybody will go around with their votes, and then uh, the execution will be that player on that player's right. And the characters will be put up, one character will be burned, and it will be passed from there. Once one of the two situations occur, A, all the witches are burned, or B, a number of characters based on the number of players playing the game are removed, innocence. And each of the different player counts is different. Falsely condemned for a five player game is 13, and then it goes to 12, 14, 16, 16, 12, so on and so forth based on the player counts. Then that's it, the game is over. There's a few little unique uh, intrinsic scenes to the game, but for the most part, that's how you play the game. Burn the witch. Okay, let's talk about my review. So unlike games like Mafia or The Resistance, where Mafia has certain character powers that you can utilize and kind of claim your specific role, and of course you're always able to lie, whether it be this game or those games, um, or the game like Resistance where you have cards that will allow you to peek at character roles and whatnot, this game does not let you do that. You know what yours are, but you do not know what your opponents are. This is a game of numbers. It matters to you because you want to keep your characters for voting. You also want to be the player that is eliminating as many people as possible. If you're the witch, you want to eliminate all the innocents because that way you will basically be protected. And if you are the heretics, you're trying to suss out the witches, which is harder said than done. Even though there's only two in all of these characters here, the difficult, challenging process of determining which character people are hiding is going to be unique to each and every game. If I'm, for instance, a witch and I have this character here, um, I'm, the, I'm a sympathizer and I have this character who's a witch, these guys are actually not. So if everybody burns all of my characters but this one, they might be less likely to want to get rid of this one. And I can actually help them aid, that I could actually aid them in that quest, allowing them to suss out other characters in my house to make me prove to be more innocent. Because it's a game of numbers and percentages, the likelihood of this character being not uh, a witch is high, considering they've gotten rid of all three of my other ones. But in truth, the entire game, I have gotten them to do so. I've specifically allowed them to select certain things and be like, oh, there's more of these red characters around the board now than anything else. We should get rid of those. Oh, if you want to get rid of mine, that's fine. It's innocent, obviously. It's going to hurt us as a team. And then they go ahead and select it, and bam, it was innocent. And that's the whole idea of the game. Sometimes, if, like I said, if I have a coven and I have two witches and nobody else has one, and I tap my friend Joey on the left-hand shoulder, and I'm like, okay, you're on my team now, he can actually go ahead and get rid of all of his characters, and wow, none of them were witches. And thusly, it helped me the entire time, allowing him to suss out his while protecting mine. Because this is a game of numbers, it's not necessarily about kind of the identifying aspect of the game. It's all about keeping yourself and your one witch, or maybe two, a very low profile. Make people determine that you are not uh, statistically viable. Another cool interesting thing about this game too is if you are a character who has been found out as you have one character as a witch. It's also fairly unlikely that you have another witch and if you do ooh, you're in the clear for a bit because you're going to actually become hexed. Your house will be hexed. So if my let's say my one character that got, re you know, got removed from the game and she was the witch, oh no I'm the witch, I am now hexed. Anytime somebody destroys one of my characters, they have to lose one of their own. It might be beneficial, and in fact, it must. It might even be um, needed in order for the other team, the other team, to win the game. But it's going to be at a great cost, which might make them want to look around at other players, even knowing that I'm actually a bad player working for the bad team. However, on the other end, you realize too that witches um, as slash sympathizers have a number of votes and removing their votes by also maybe even having to remove yours can be potentially useful. But at the same cost is, is it actually worth it if you've now reduced your innocent vote to lower than the witch's vote, cur vote currently is? There's a lot of deduction in the game, but it's in a unique, it's in a different way than other games I've seen. This is not about sussing out roles. It's about playing the numbers, playing the 
odds, and then finally playing the people as the game progressively gets more and more condensed to where that tight end happens. It could be that you're down to the last four players left in the game or three players left in the game or maybe only a couple cards left because there's a certain number of innocents and it's a high number to be removed from the game and it feels really good. Now of course there are some instances where you just kind of happen to get lucky and you burn those witches and the game is over but there's a very few and far between. This is mainly about kind of deducing and reducing the numbers of the characters and players and their votes and people kind of going back and forth with each other explaining why they are not or look at what the stats say. Look at what the stats say. There's no way I could have this or that because of this reason, but in truth they do. And using that to manipulate the game and manipulate the players around you is very, very powerful. The fact that the devotees allow you to kind of basically remove a character, even if you have all the devotees and then the, the witches as well, you can now use those characters to your advantage to keep people off of your back because it could be dangerous to them. Oh, you don't want to go for one of my characters. I have at least two devotees. I won't tell you which ones, but now that you know, you might lose a vote if you get rid of one of mine. Your votes are powerful, the characters are useful, and while there's only three roles in the game, this has a lot of uniqueness to it. The fact that you could also add additional roles to the game, you could add those decks of cards that allow you to reveal or check on a witch's role and all that, and kind of introduce new elements to the game. But as it stands, this is a deduction game by numbers and stats, and also playing the player based on the cards that they have left. If you're looking for a unique social deduction game that kind of plays a twist on this game, this kind of genre, then Burn the Witch is definitely for you. I enjoy games like these, I enjoy this game, I like the fact that they kind of twisted it around a bit to where you're not gathering information as much as on the table as you are based on the numbers and the players and how they're choosing to utilize what is available to them on the field. Yes, Burn the Witch is a fun game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Burn the Witch, the social deduction game. If you're interested in picking up this game, there's a link down below in the description. Remember though, this plays five to 15 players, so you need a fairly large player group, and the more, the merrier. I never got to that 15 number, as a lot of players to have play, but the fact that you can go up there is wonderful. Unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. If you feel like you're so inclined to subscribe and you think we've earned it, please go ahead and do so and click that bell notification button. It greatly does help us, it makes us want to keep more, making more videos just like this one. Indie games, unique games, Kickstarter games that you may have not have seen otherwise. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to burning the witch with you next time.